What is this regarding Nord? Morrowind is known for its intolerance for outsiders. Pretty much everyone born outside the province, including other Dunmer, is and forever will be an outlander, a stranger. Outlander. And this is further explained by the fact that Dark Elves are, in general, sensitive to accents, clothes and manners. They will openly judge you by the way you walk, talk and look. And although this can be somewhat downplayed in-game through high charisma, i.e. personality and speechcraft, Masera. fact is, Dunmer society including native factions are, for the most part, resilient towards accepting and integrating foreigners into their ranks. Yet there are exceptions to the rule. And today we will talk about someone who not only managed to successfully integrate into a Dunmer society, but even got into a position of potentially influencing the politics of a great house. And not just any, but the one famous for being, well, extra reclusive and let's say inhospitable towards outsiders. We are talking of course about the great house Telvanni, which makes the case of Turedus Talanian even more fascinating. And today we will talk about him and his home of Telvos, because there is a little bit of mystery behind him. What do we know about Turedus? And why is Telvos so unique. My name is Alec and as always thank you for watching. If there is ever a list of random inconsequential NPCs, Turedus would easily be one of my top picks. So this imperial warrior became Master Aryan's personal bodyguard, with Aryan being of course the counselor of the Grey House Telvanni, and as such occupies the highest chamber of the magnificent Tel Vos. But obviously our story doesn't end there, because Turedus isn't just some hired muscle, but someone who is also invested in the local politics. Meaning he isn't there just for the coin, but seemed to genuinely care about the prosperity of the local community. He also wrote a book on House Telmani and even advises Master Aryan on different matters. The book in question is The Affairs of Wizards and its purpose is to inform those interested in joining the Telvani about the works and, well, affairs of this exotic great house. It's actually a rather funny text, providing among other reasons for hiring foreign mercenaries. Want to become part of House Telvani? Outsiders learning of the rabid isolationist and outlander hating temperament of House Telvani wizards often assume it will be impossible to obtain positions in service to House Telvani. Nothing could be further from the truth. And Teredus then goes into a full Telvani apologist mode. And what's best, and I do find it kind of funny, he's very honest about it. For example, when he says, look, it's true that Telvani are totally into slavery and many Khajiit and Argonians are kept as slaves, but Telvani accept all races as candidates for membership, including Khajiit and Argonians. Or when he encourages candidates of modest intelligence to still consider applying. Telvani accept candidates of modest intelligence and willpower. Conscience makes cowards of us all, Outlander. What makes this smell? And finally, Turedos explains why House Telvani requires Western mercenaries. The truth is that House Telvani wizard lords depend on the loyal, well-paid, skilled retainers for most services. Though House Telvani does recruit from their own lower classes, they must go outside their house to hire the craftsmen and specialists they need. And since for political reasons House Telvani has chosen to reduce its reliance on rather mercenaries for protection and security, it has been forced to turn to western mercenaries for guards and agents. Promotion in the ranks of House Telvani, however, is very difficult for outsiders. Most disconcerting for some potential candidates is House Telvani's casual acceptance of murder and assassination of rivals as means to advancement. Those reluctant to prove their worthiness by killing off the competition and those uncomfortable about competing in such ruthless atmosphere might better employ their time and efforts in the Mages Guild. 
What's interesting is that Tourette's seem to fully acknowledge or even embrace this Machiavellian mindset. His depiction of how Stavani is as straightforward as it comes, and while obviously serving as in-game introduction for this faction, it's interesting that developers decided to write it from the point of view of another Outlander. Now, where did I put that? And Tourette's is right. Throughout the game, we may encounter a few low-ranking Western mercenaries employed as guards. These are usually barbarians warriors, spell swords, predominantly of Nord or Breton origin. But what makes Turedus exceptional is his status. As already mentioned, he is Tavani's counselor's personal bodyguard and invested in the local politics. I believe that his imperial military background is a main reason for achieving such status. Turedus himself will point out that he not only used to serve the legions, but also knows how to run a garrison and lead men. I'm a warrior by trade, and an officer by training. I served in the legions, and I know how to run a garrison. I know how to fight, and I know how to lead men. Master Arian is a very original thinker, and I help him keep his feet on the ground. Now, this is a pure speculation, but if we take his statement literally, and Tyrannus in fact did run a full garrison, this would make him at least a knight protector, as pretty much all commanding officers that run the imperial forts are of this exact rank. And as a side note, Tyrannus is also level 15, same as at least a couple of other knight protectors, including another imperial, General Darius. So I think it's reasonable to believe that Tyrannus was a knight protector, possibly even running one of the imperial forts found in game. Now, I said was, as I'm not sure if he is still a member of the Legion. Due to the limitations of the game, NPCs can only belong to one faction, but as we know, it's entirely possible to be a member of multiple factions, so Tyrannus could technically still belong to the boat. He is, however, officially a lawman of the House Telvanni, which is a low mid-tier rank. Not super important, but also not to be underestimated. However, in Tyrannus' case, his influence comes from his personal relationship with Master Arion. The way I see it, Tyrannus could be a retired officer, or perhaps he simply decided to side quest and explore native society. And judging by his outfit, including an extravagant shirt, Daedric gauntlet, and a dragon scale helm, he seems to be doing quite well. Now, his background or origin could tie in with the question of Telvos, and this is actually one of the lesser known running mysteries of Morrowind, if you will, and the question is, was Telvos originally an imperial fort taken over by Master Aryan, or was it purposely built like this by him? Because for all these years of playing Morrowind, I always thought of Telvos as an experiment, an expression of an idea, and a unique structure built by Master Aryan, symbolizing perhaps a potential union or alliance between the Empire and the House Telvanni. Master Aryan is, after all, regarded as a most open-minded Telvanni lord, with plans of reforming the Grey House and leading it into a new direction. Always are the best ways, Outlander. Too many visitors forget their manners. Telvos is an architectural wonder, blending imperial or western style with the recognizable Telvanni fungi-based weirdness. It's also the only home of a Telvanni counselor set on the main island. And like I said, to me, this always symbolized Master Aryan's vision of a reformed house Telvanni, one that is less reclusive and more acceptable to the Empire. And speaking from a pure architectural point of view, Telvos seem to be only partially successful, as there are visible damages throughout the tower, caused by protruding organic parts. Or could it be that it's still a work in progress, since there are some unfinished sections, further reinforcing the belief that Telvos is being actively built by Master Arion. In fact, there are notes found in the dungeon, left by construction workers, and the very first entry provides some details regarding the construction of Telvos. Today we finally finished hewing out the two main jail rooms and all six cells, almost as if in response to our celebration, several of those damn roots grew through the wall and took out two of our cells. 
I wonder constantly what those wizards could be up to up there in the tower. But I guess this is the nature of working for the Telvanni. I will inform them again of our construction plans, which they provided to us, and request that they refrain from such actions in the future. So according to these notes, construction plans were given by the Telvanni wizards, or to be more precise, Master Aryan himself. It really feels like Telvos was meant to be an imitation of an imperial fort. It's built to resemble one. Its exceptionally high towers and, dare I say, unpractical confusing layout simply don't reflect standard imperial architecture. And speaking to the locals, we can actually learn more about Tel Vos and its relation to the village of Vos. You see, Vos wasn't originally a Telvani village. In fact, entire Grazelands region is sort of an unclaimed wilderness inhabited by independent Ashlanders. It's honestly one of my favorite parts of Wardenfell. It feels warm, peaceful and open. And I love the contrast with the menacing fires of Red Mountain in the distance. But now, in regards to Vos, this is what locals have to say. Voss is an old Veloti farm village in the Grazelands. Dunmer have farmed here for centuries. Life's never been easy. And the Ashlanders have always raided and stolen our weak wheat and marshmallow. But our new Telvanni mage lord, Master Aryan of Telvos, protects us from the Ashlanders. And he's grown us a fine new trade house and docks. Telvos is Master Aryan's wizard's tower. It's very strange. You have to see it to understand. Master Aryan isn't afraid to try new things. So I think that this quote says a lot. First of all, Vos was a very dangerous place for living due to its remoteness and constant Ashlander raids all the way up until Master Aryan's arrival. He literally rebuilt the village in its current form, adding a port and a trade house, and in a typical Telvanni fashion, settled in a tower overlooking the town. And also, if there was an imperial fort nearby prior to this, villagers wouldn't need Telvanni protection from the raids. So. Another argument towards the hypothesis that Tel Vos is Master Aryan's original tower. Speaking of Ashlanders, Teredus is also actively working on building a better relation and trade with them, and he will send a player to negotiate with the Zainab tribe to the south of Vos. It's yet another small detail adding depth to his character, while reaffirming Master Aryan's general politics of bringing peace into this region, as well as another contrast with other Telvanni lords who are deeply embedded in constant, selfish, petty wars. Again, Turedus himself says that he cares about the prosperity of the village of Vos and Telvos. Turedus also has a dialogue about keeping Master Aryan's feet on the ground. And this particular quote always stood out to me, because it clearly suggests that Turedus has some kind of a influence over Master Aryan. Master Aryan may be youngest councilman, open-minded and willing to embrace changes, but he is still a Telvanni. For all we know, he still supports slavery and is willing to replace current Archmagister, Gotran, one way or the other. And his personal museum even exhibits an imperial guard locked behind a cell door, which seems to contradict his pro-empire agenda. If his goal is to establish an alliance between the empire and House Telvanni, why imprisoning a genuine imperial guard as some sort of a museum exhibit? Well, my answer is that Master Aryan, in a typical Telvanni fashion, is simply too eccentric and weird, in a lack of a better word, to even comprehend the gravity of such action. To this powerful Dunmer wizard, having a real human as a display is like having another book on a shelf. I think it's more of a result of a Dunmer culture as whole, in which for millennia owning another human or an elf is extremely common. Where is that slave? And this could be the reason why Teredus mentions keeping Master Aryan grounded, although that not might be always successful. In the end, Master Aryan's old mentor is Divide Fear himself, oldest and arguably single most powerful wizard in the game. In fact, Aryan will ask us to talk to Divide Fear and Baladas Demnewan to join him and help him become a new Archmagister. 
Coincidentally, these are some of my favorite characters in game. Both Divide Fear and Belladus Demdawan are some of the most knowledgeable NPCs and just imagining all three of them working together, molding this wonderfully chaotic and weird faction into something even weirder is, in my opinion, one of the best what-if scenarios in the entire Elder Scrolls franchise. Could they save House Tavani from Red Year and Argonian invasion? Who knows, but in my opinion, they would be a much better addition to 4th era Telvanni lore than Master Nellet, who in Morrowind was kinda forgettable and uninspiring, but again, that's just my opinion. There's something very cozy yet melancholic about the entire story of Telvos and short-lived uncommon alliance between the Telvanni and Empire formed within its walls. It truly feels like a well-written storyline of a place that once existed, had its dreams and hopes, and then just perished, only to be forgotten. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon. Build a man a fire, he'll be warm for a day. But you set a man on fire, he'll be warm for the rest of his life.